Okay, so we talked about a few of the different parts involved in hypothesis testing. Um, let's just kind of go through the five steps that are recommended um, that researchers and scientists follow when they're doing a hypothesis test. So the first step is to state both the null and alternative hypotheses. Okay, so we practice that. Um, step two is to design the study. You select the correct statistical test to use, you choose your level of significance, and then you formulate a plan to carry out the study. Step three then is to actually conduct the study and collect the data. Now for us, since we're in a classroom setting, we're not gonna actually be designing any of our own studies. Um, we won't even be choosing our own level of significance. Every single question is gonna tell us what that is. Um, that way we all get the same results. Um, and yeah, we're not gonna be conducting the study. You're going out and collecting data. Uh, since we're in a classroom setting. But in the real world, you would obviously have to do those two things yourself. Um, but step four we will do. So we'll evaluate the data, um, we'll conduct the, high, conduct the statistical test, and we'll decide whether to reject or not reject the null hypothesis. And then step five is really important. So step five is to actually summarize the results. So with every single hypothesis test that we do, we're going to end it by making a summary statement. Okay, and we're gonna use this table over here to the right uh, for every single problem that we do. So you will get very comfortable with this table. Um, you do not have to memorize it. I actually suggest keeping it handy, keep it right along with your um, critical values. So let's just kind of look at what our possibilities are for our summary statement. So there's four possible statements. Um, it just depends on whether your claim is located in the null or in the alternative hypothesis. Um, and then it depends on what decision you make. So whether you um, decide to reject the null or you don't reject the null. So uh, let's just kind of go over them quick. So if your claim is in the null and you reject the null, then you're gonna say that there is enough evidence to reject the claim. If your claim is in the null and you decide to not reject the null, then you'll say there is not enough evidence to reject the claim. Okay, so hopefully those make sense there. So you'll notice that the word reject is used when the claim is located in the null hypothesis. Uh, how about if your claim is in the alternative? Well, if it's in the alternative and you end up rejecting the null, then pretty much what that means is you're throwing your support to the alternative. So you reject the null, therefore you support the alternative. So if the claim is the alternative, then you would say there is enough evidence to support the claim. If the claim is in the alternative and you do not reject the null hypothesis, then you would say there is not enough evidence to support the claim. So the phrase reject is traditionally used when the claim is in the null, and then the phrase support is used when the claim is in the alternative hypothesis.